There was a fresher at St Andrews University a few years ago who joined the hockey club. And in one of the first away socials, the club captain said to all the freshers that they had to bring a CD with them for the car that they were travelling in. Well, this fresher forgot about it until the very last minute as she was leaving the house to go meet up with the squad. So she dashed back into the house, scurried around, and she just picked up what the only CD she could find, a Christian worship CD. She shoved it in her bag, dashed and met the squad. Uh, they got assigned to their different cars and she got into her car and was desperately hoping that the other girls in the car wouldn't ask about the CD. Well, small talk went on for a little bit until the dreaded moment arrived. The second year piped up, oh, have you got your CD then? And she sheepishly pulled out this worship CD. She said, uh, yeah, this is this is the only, one of the only ones I've got. And she told them she was a Christian. They said, well, go on and put it in. She puts the CD in and they listen to the entire thing all the way to their away fixture. What would you have done? Uh, would you have put it in? Maybe, maybe. Hey. I wonder if you've ever had one of those moments. Maybe not a CD, but a situation where you have had a choice to make whether you want to make your faith known or not. Whether you want to let your light shine. That's what we're thinking about now in our final talk here at New Year Training. We've heard, haven't we, two nights ago about the great light of Christ who dawned in the darkness of time to rescue us from our sins and to call us to himself. And then the challenge to go and follow him and make him known. And then last night we thought about what it looks like then to live this life, this rescued life as saved sinners in order to be the salt of the earth, following Christ's way, which is different to the culture around us. The question is, is why does it matter? Does it really does it really make a difference if we run in the light in this way? Well, we've heard Matthew 5, verse 14 to 16 read. I love that for you to keep that up in front of you. And, and within these few verses, we've got Jesus's words that are packed full of challenge and encouragement to us. And the first thing I want you to see is right there in front of you now. Can you see it? You are the light of the world, Jesus says. It's not you might be. It's not you could be. It's not even that you will be. What does he say? No, you are the light of the world. Please know this this evening, right now, whether you've had a great Christmas or a rubbish Christmas, because of Christ, you are the light of the world. This is the truth of the gospel. See, Jesus was the great light that came. And so anyone who has repented of that old way of life, turned to him, thrown their allegiance on him, has now got Christ in them. His spirit is transforming you. You are called the light of of the world. Do you know what you're doing right now? Whether you know it or not, whether you feel it or not, you're shining bright, you're beaming. And it's not through any effort of your own, any merit or contribution. It is surely through the grace and the mercy of Jesus and all that he achieved on the cross and then his indwelling spirit inside your heart right now. I'm sure you've heard this analogy before, but it, it's just a great way of capturing this. Yeah, this is the reality for all of us. What's our life? It's full of sin. It's dark. It's black. We contribute nothing but our sin to God. We reject him. We ignore him. We rebel against him. We're black. We're dirty. We're grubby. We're filthy. And then Jesus arrives. Pure, clean holy, spotless. And what does Jesus do on the cross in that moment? He takes our sin off of himself, doesn't he? He puts it upon off of us. He puts it on him. He dies in our place. He, he takes the right, fair, just punishment, the wrath of God for our sin. But here's the remarkable bit. Not only does he take that off us, what does he do? He gives us his righteousness. He clothes us with his status. When we trust Jesus, we are now declared pure, clean, spotless, holy, righteous. 
See, this is the reality for anyone trusting Jesus. This is a reality for you tonight. If you have repented, if you have trusted Christ, you are transformed. You are the light of the world, Jesus says, in this dark world. And so the question is, how will you let your light shine? How are you going to run in light of it? See, because according to Jesus in these verses, following him is, is no private matter. Do you see that? Look at verses 14 and to 16 again. This is so important for us, but more important as well is grasping the context. Greg mentioned this last night. Look at verse 14 and uh, 11 and 12 of me again. See what Jesus says. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecute the prophets who were before you. And then he goes on to say, you are the salt, you are the light. See, the prophets were battered for speaking the word of God. They were they were God's mouthpiece illuminating the word of God in the darkness of the world that was rejecting God. And what's Jesus saying? He said, like they didn't stop living and speaking for Jesus, we shouldn't either. And actually more than that, expect insult. Inspect, expect lies, expect anything to come your way, but don't let it stop you. Why? Look at it. Because the reward in store is worth losing everything for. Look at verse 12. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. Just think with me for a moment. When he attempted to shrink back or hide your faith. If you're a sportswoman or a sportsman in any sports club, moments come all the time like this, don't I feel it all the time. Why are we tempted? Well, I think for many, not all, but for many Christians, it's a combination of fear and greed. Fear that someone might say something nasty or, or mean about us or even to us. Fear that, I don't know, that we might be excluded from a friendship group, ignored by a coach, pushed out by the captain. Fear that someone might just think we're weird, deluded, strange. These flash by our minds all the time, don't they? These fears, and, and particularly when you're in the minority, they can, they can silence you. But these fears are actually also mixed with greed. Let me explain. See, when you desperately are worried and fearful of being excluded, what you're also doing in the same moment is that you're craving to be accepted. You're longing to be included. Like the reality is no one enjoys being persecuted for their faith. Of course they don't. It's an unpleasant, uncomfortable experience. And so what happens in that moment is instead of treasuring Christ and all that we have in him and, and trusting and believing in what is to come, sadly, we can exchange that. We can lose sight of that. And we greed after the love, acceptance, inclusion of people around us. See, strip it all back. What's one of the reasons we can so often be tempted to hide our new light of life? It's a disbelief and a dissatisfaction in the eternal reward of heaven. Look at verse 12 again and soak this in. Rejoice and be glad, Jesus says, now, because great is your reward in the future in heaven. Do you believe that tonight? Do you really believe it? Do you, do you treasure that truth? Because when you do, I really believe that this is the moment where we can start to become free from fears. We can be released from that desire and, and greed for human love and we can face opposition, we can face insults. And do you know what happens when you endure that and you push through that? Do you know what starts to happen? You shine. You shine bright for Jesus. This is what Jesus is getting at here. He says, you are a light. You are a light. 
Look at verse 14 and 15 again. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and give and it gives light to everyone in the house. See, the, the, the bright lights of a bustling city don't get turned off, do they? And no one goes away, buys a lamp, goes home, plugs it in and puts a black bag over it. Not only would that be dangerous, it would be pointless. It makes no sense. If you've got a light, let it shine. And Jesus says, you are a light. Right now, however you're feeling, you are the light of Christ if you are in him. So let your light shine. Let others see Christ in you. But what could that really look like? Practically, what could that look like? Well, we're going to hear from Archie an ex-Glasgow University student who sought to shine bright for Jesus in his university rugby club. Mate, uh, obviously you're graduated now. Um, as you reflect back at your time at university, uh, what was it like? What was your experience of trying to, trying to live for Christ, uh, trying to be salt and light in the context of, of your sports team? Uh, when you reflect back, what does it what does it look like? What did it what did it feel like? Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, it was it was hard, um, and I wasn't very good at it, um, particularly to begin with. Um, one of the first things I did when I I got to university was get stuck in uh, with the rugby club, um, uh, and one of the other th first things I did when I got to university was get stuck in to church, um, but my friends at church had nothing to do with the rugby club and my friends at the rugby club had nothing to do with church. And I, I very much lived a double life. Um, uh, and that was rubbish. <laughs> um, I felt torn in different directions all the time. Um, and I wasn't living consistently uh, at all. Um, one day Dave Hampton sat me down and told me to sort my life out, which I, uh, started to try to do um, and started to connect the dots and and what was really exciting for me at that time was friends from the rugby club expressing an interest in coming along to church hearing the gospel um, and that was really exciting and um, a, a really good time uh, it completely changed the game for me um, knowing that it was okay for me to be a Christian in a rugby club to share Jesus with my teammates that that wasn't weird um, was yeah complete like a completely life-changing moment for me i say thanks bro thanks for being so so honest um talk to me uh talk to me about the group itself your cis group what what role did that play for you how is it how is it useful for you in the context yeah a uh, cool story about the cis group at, at glasgow uni so when i arrived um, at university i didn't even know christians in sport existed um, there was one girl, um, Moira Watkins, and she met on her own for like two or three years every Wednesday morning and prayed that one day there would be a, a Christian support group. Um, and by the time I left uni in my fifth year, there were like, I mean, there were probably 30 of us in our Facebook group, 40 of us in our Facebook group, with between 10 and 15 meeting every Wednesday morning. Um, so uh, if you are tuning in on this and you're on your own keep praying um because god does stuff like that and it's and it's great um but yeah it was really through the the christians in sport group at uni that i was challenged in the way that i was living in, in the rugby team so dave sat me down pointed me towards the uh, towards the group uh, but it was going along to that having that accountability uh, having people kind of every wednesday morning being like how are you sharing the gospel today um that really kept me going that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Thanks, bro. Okay, one more question. Uh, now, obviously, this has been a particularly challenging year, uh, and we're we're hoping and praying for a refresh, uh, a restart to the world of sport soon. Um, some of some of the freshers might not even even have had much opportunity to meet teammates or be a part of anything yet. Mm -hmm. uh, you're now seven, eight years on from freshers week from your freshers year. If, if you had the opportunity to drop a message back to your old fresher self mm -hmm. uh, or even just to your old student self uh, to give, give them an encouragement, a challenge to, 
uh, to keep on walking, running, playing in the light for Christ. Uh, what, what would you say? What a piece of advice would you give them? Yeah, I think uh, just be real, be honest, nail your colours to the mast in your sports team uh, early. Tell them that you're a Christian as early as you can. Um, but don't let that uh, kind of be a pressure to be a, a perfect human being. Um, Sam Albury, Christian writer, um, brilliant readers books if you haven't, haven't read them. And um, he said something like this, uh, we don't need to be perfect to make Jesus look good. Um, we need to be honest to help people see that Jesus is perfect. Um, I just think that's um, brilliant. Um, and I wish I'd known that at uni um, because the pressure to be perfect and just never measuring up to that um, crippled me at, at times. And um, yeah, we don't need to be perfect to share the gospel with our teammates. We just need to be honest with them. Oh, bro. Thank you, man. That's ace. Hey, thanks for joining us. And uh, yeah. thanks for being an encouragement. See you soon. See you soon. So what is it like for you? What could Matthew 5, 16 mean to you for your life this term, this year, uh, for the rest of your life? Well, let's read it again. Verse 16, in the same way, let your light shine before others that you may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. Jesus is very clear here. It's what we need sometimes as sports people, isn't it? What are we to do? We're to let our light shine before others. How are we to do it? Through good deeds. And why are we to do it? To glorify our Father in heaven. Let's take those three things briefly now. What are we to do? Well, we're to let our light shine before others. We thought about this a little bit already. And so here's the point I want you to see. Jesus is pretty explicit here, doesn't he? He expects his followers to be before others. We're to be amongst people, amongst people who don't know Jesus and don't believe in him. And so the simple question is, which I ask myself first and foremost, as well as you, is are you? I know right now COVID is, is just ruining so much of our community and social life. It's very, very difficult. So probably you haven't been able to in so many different ways. But Let's just think about this more broadly, just for a moment. What could this look like to be before others? The reality for many Christians, and again, myself included, is hanging out with our Christian friends can sometimes often be nicer. It's certainly safer and we enjoy it. And because of those reasons we talked about, the fears uh, we often associate with coming with people who don't believe. But Jesus does not call us to isolate from our sports clubs. Rather, what does he call us to do? He calls us to illuminate our sports clubs for the glory of God, even if we do get insulted or persecuted or people say stuff about us. Someone once said to me, look, you can tell how much time a Christian spends with their friends who aren't Christians by having a look at their bank balance and have a look at their diary. Because the reality is, if you want to hang out with your mates outside of training and competing, it's probably going to cost you some kind of time in your diary and it probably will cost you some sort of money. I know if I want to hang out with my rugby boys, it's probably going to involve eating chicken and having to pay for it. That's just the reality. And I wonder what that looks like for you. See, one of the great dangers we often face as Christians is that we pack our weeks full of stuff, often Christian stuff, with good intention. But we leave no time at all for being available, being around, being able to have quality time with our sports friends. See, which one are you? Are you a flake? Or are you a boost? Are you flaky? Hardly there? Or do you boost? Do you make a difference? Look, I can be both of these in at different times, of course. But what does this look like? Are you the, the girl or the guy who's last to jump to training because you've dashed from something to get to training? You're then first to leave because you've got to get to something else. Your mates walk down the street and you haven't got a moment to stop and talk to them because you're checking your walks and you've got to get to something else. That's flaky, yeah? Or are you a boost? Can you get to training early? Can you have a chat with people? Can you stick around after? Can you offer lifts? Can you help 
get clear of it. If a mate gets in touch with you and says they, they just need to talk to someone, are you able to drop stuff and actually go and speak to them? If they get in, the club captain gets in touch and says, can anyone wash the kit, help with the fixtures? Have you got capacity to do that? Are you a flake or are you a boost? See, what could it look like for us all, myself included here, to pray that through the work of the Holy Spirit, we might be a boost to our sports clubs. We might make a difference. We might be before others, illuminating the word of God, the good news of Jesus through our actions and through our words. See, that's what a light does, isn't it? It brings light to the darkness. And Jesus says, you are a light. So go on, let your light shine before others. That's what we are to do. But how are we to go about it then? What does that then look like? Well, look at the verse again. He, he says it straight afterwards for us. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds. Right. Let's clarify something really quickly here. This is what it doesn't mean. It doesn't mean that you've now got to tell all your mates about some of the stuff you've been up to on your Instagram account or in the WhatsApp group for the sports club. It, it, that's not what it's about. Jesus squashes that. In chapter six, verse one, look at it. He says, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will know you'll have no reward from your father in heaven. It's not about that. Look carefully back at 16. What does he say? Let them see your good deeds. He doesn't say tell others about your good deeds. See, it's not our responsibility to make our good deeds known. Here's what it is. Being a follower of Christ in light of Matthew four and five, it's about letting the Holy Spirit do the good deeds in and through you in order to make God known. This is what it means when he talks about good deeds. And again, the context is crucial, isn't it? What did the prophets do? They illuminated the word of God in the face of opposition. They dared to tell the gospel. And so we must equally dare to do these good deeds in the face of challenges, particularly whether in actions or in words. We need to persevere to run in this light. In light of those Beatitudes we heard about last night and in light of the rest of the Sermon on the Mount. If you've got the time, I'd love you to check it out because Jesus brings to life what some of these good deeds might actually look like. Being kind instead of angry. Being faithful. Instead of lusting, honouring our word instead of lying, being generous instead of greedy, loving our neighbours and our enemies instead of hating them. This is how the light of Christ shines. This is what it means to follow Jesus and allow his spirit to transform you to be able to do these good deeds and shine brightly for him. That's how we are to do it but why what's the point what's the point of all of this you might be sad going okay got you got you going but why well look at it one last time why so that you might glorify your father in heaven this is the great goal this is the goal of being a christian this is why we run that everyone might bring glory to God. See, uh, as we seek to try and help our friends with their, their temporal needs through small or big acts of love, together let's pray that and be passionate that it will result in their eternal praise going to God. See, wouldn't it be amazing that over the course of this year, uh, despite all the rubbish circumstances that we're facing, that we can tell stories of university sports students who've come to know God for themselves, who love him, who serve him, who glorify him both now and forever. This is why we do it. And Jesus says, shine, shine bright through your good deeds so that glory, praise, honour will go to his father, our father, his father, who's seated on heaven, seeing the Remember the fresher at St. Andrews University? Well, over the course of uh, her th remaining three years at uh, St. Andrews, she moved from the cycling club to the triathlon club, but, uh, from the hockey club, sorry, to the triathlon club. 
But she stayed in touch with quite a lot of the hockey girls. And from time to time, they invited her along to the socials. And uh, she quite liked going. It was in the same pub right out the back where they could play their own music. So she went along to one of the socials this one time in her final year, in her fourth year. She was chatting to some of the girls that she knew and the music was on in the background. And then suddenly one of the other girls who she didn't know gets up and says, girls, quiet, quiet. It's that song again. And to the fresher, to the Christian, to her amazement, over the speakers rings out nothing but the blood of Jesus. And the whole room starts singing along. Story goes that they listened to that worship CD quite a few times in her year. And occasionally some of the songs made it onto the next year and the next year. And if it was good enough, it made it onto the St. Andrews University Women's Hockey Club playlist. And nothing but the blood of Jesus made it on there. See, what does it look like then for you? This year, to run in the light and let it shine before others in your sports club so that God gets the glory.